Hey guys, Ajax22 here, and uh, been tinkering away. Realized I hadn't made a video of any part of this process so far in this gun, so um, yeah. Here we are, this is going to be another in the Mad Max series, uh, not to be confused with the steampunk guns, but um, basically doing a uh, interpretation of a, a Mad Max 1911 um, thing that uh, differentiates this from the steampunk is that it's going to be a lot more weld heavy a lot more um, you know crude fabrication as far as the uh, the tacking of metal to itself to bring it back up add, add grip um, sections um, sights are going to be made from um, halves of steel 1943 um, pennies um, you know, lots, lots of little thing. The, uh, the the extended beaver tail. I'm actually looking at making out of an old spoon. Um, the grips. I'm I'm actually going to be doing um, a modified uh, skull and cross pistons to keep it along the same uh, vein as the the Mad Max M11 nines that I've been working on. And uh, you know, I'm I'm starting out using a, as a base using these because I had them kicking around. These are those cheap um, knockoff, kind of a bad idea grips that um, you know are available for cheap. They're uh, roll checkered. They're they're actually really pretty decent wood. Um, they just have the silly little U.S. in the middle of them that was just you know wholly unnecessary by my my way of thinking. So what I did was I took the uh, trusty Buck 110 that lives in the uh, sketchbook and just uh, whittled off the uh, the markings. It still might need a little more to get them completely gone, but uh, as you can see from the tracings that I'm doing, I'm actually gonna reduce the, uh, you know, shave this diamond up and then burn in the skull same techniques that I did on the other ones but I wanted to get rid of the grip serrations because I just didn't like the way they looked I didn't like the way they felt they just on these US grips they feel um, chintzy and cheesy um, another option I was originally considering for this gun but I might not is these uh, Colt um, you know gold cup grips that I've got that are nicely worn like these were carried on somebody's gun for a long time these were um, actually donated by a, a viewer um, to a different project on one of my, my early restorations. So um, yeah, there's that. Um, I'm sure you, can, you can see it on there. It's gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably use one of the straight mag uh, mainspring housings that I've got and then have it uh, built up with weld to the same shape as the original. Uh, A1 style because I like the A1. I'll probably use an early 1918 hammer because I've got one. I don't know that I'll modify it if I do that. Probably not actually. Um, this frame that I'm considering using is uh, a little out of spec. Um, another one of those ones that you know started out as a, a really great idea but uh, needed a lot of work. Um, it's still out of spec and it's a commander length. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking of actually modifying a uh, piece of sheet metal to uh, weld on underneath. Use it, and this is just a, a mock up for templating. Um, and then have it, you know, sort of hug the slide. Um, mixed feelings on how that's going to work. But, you know, there's the frame gap on these. So I'll probably, you know, get rid of that and then extend it back out or just leave it as is and extend it out, uh, do something. Um, probably going to do portholes on the slide in the, in the actual side meat. Probably do them straight along and uh, evenly spaced. Four of them, I think, because, you know, Buick Rives. Um, and then what else? Oh, um, I'm going to hand engrave uh, Ultima Ratio Regum on the side because, uh, yeah, um, it's awesome. Louis, Louis XIV put it on all his cannons, as I recall. Um, 
the final argument of kings. So uh, if I decide to run with this frame, it's going to be uh, done in like an acid salt dip to get it to the same color as the, the Remington Rand slide that's got some machine marks on it and you know lost all significance. Um, but yeah, should be fun. It needs uh, needs a lot of fitting. Needs a lot of uh, you know making it work. I'm gonna do something to the mag. Uh, probably weld on some kind of a you know lanyard loop and then skeletonize the sides of it. Uh, you know, a lot of work to do. But uh, it's the kind of thing that needs to have all the parts sort of show up and uh, mocked up before it can be fully done. I just was working on the grips here and realized that you guys had absolutely no idea of what uh, what I was doing um, or you know why or, or, <laughs> or any of that. So this one is uh, Mad Max 1911 um, you know built off an 80 and uh, it's gonna be nice and ugly. It's a little pretty right now, um, but uh, no worries with the, the, the parts that are going on to it and the machine processes we're going to use. It's not going to stay pretty. It's going to be, you know, beautiful, but not pretty. Um, oh, and uh, before anybody asks, uh, I am collecting up the parts to get back on the A5. So, that's happening. Just, uh, yeah, it's my number one priority, uh, just doing this stuff because, you know, felt like it. Alright, have a good one.